Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to this uh, stream Z community meeting. Um, so let's start sharing the screen. Let me see this one. You can see my screen, right? It's the meeting yes, agenda. Okay. So let's start with the uh, questions, issues. So the open forum as usual. I see that someone had the, this uh, stream is participating at Oktoberfest. Uh, do you know who he is? Maybe he's online. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. I just okay. wanted to ask whether we are uh, joining Oktoberfest or, or not. Oktoberfest. Well, in general, I guess I, I, I don't remember the rules, uh, but in general, it seems that any kind of open source project is open, right? So you can join the Oktoberfest as a user, as a developer, and submitting PRs to open source projects. And then, uh, yeah, you will get, uh, uh, yeah, points for, um, for this. Uh, I don't know if uh, from a project point of view, we, had to do something in the past. Maybe the only thing that I remember is that uh, we can um, tag some issues uh, as kind of uh, maybe Oktoberfest, there is a specific tab tag. To be honest, uh, I didn't look into it. So, um, so I guess that I think, if I remember rightly, they changed. So previous years, it was just any project on GitHub. And then um, last year, or possibly even partway through last the Hacktoberfest last year, they changed it so that projects had to kind of opt in rather than being kind of defaulted in. Um, so I think there's probably a text file somewhere that you have to send a PR to to... Um, to be kind of officially involved in it. Okay, to, to be honest, I didn't remember that. So we should, uh, if we want to participate in, I guess that it's, uh, so it's fine, at least for me, I guess that uh, all of us agree on this, uh, to have more people uh, to be involved in the community in this way. Uh, I guess that we should check uh, the, the rules. So to see, yeah, uh, what's the way for a stream is to be involved uh, as a project in Oktoberfest. So uh, Stanislav, would you like to do this, at least getting information on how it's possible? Yeah, Tom, I just uh, shared some uh, link to the chat. Uh, I guess uh, there could be more info, but uh, yeah, I'm willing to uh, take a look. Okay, thank you. Let me even copy paste this link shared by Tom. Okay, any other uh, thing related to the open forum? I guess silence is not. So let's move on um, to the open PRs and issues. Uh, I picked up some pull request that uh, I saw maybe we're missing some reviews mainly. So let's see one by one what what's missing on them. Um, this is about rolling pods when the certificate are changed uh, that should fix this issue here. I see that um, Jakub already approved this uh, PR and uh, Maybe he or Stanislav requested the review from Tom. So, Tom, did you think that? Do you think that you 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 will have time for this? Um, yeah, I'll review that today. Okay, thank you. I noticed it's got a regression test failure. So, yeah, need to look at that. Some test timed out, so I will take a look whether it's uh, Azure issue or test issue, and uh, I will update okay. you, Tom. 
Cool, thanks. Okay, thank you guys. So the next one. This is from Mikal. I don't see Mikal uh, online. Uh, I don't see Maros either. So I guess that here we need, um, well, uh, Jakub already reviewed this PR. Now the tests should be okay. Yes. So uh, yeah, I guess that uh, we need to, to ping Jakub to have a, another pass on this uh, PR. Yeah, I think so. Marosh is on PTO. I'm not sure if he will be back next week, but uh, with Lukash, we already approved that, so we don't need to wait for Marosh. So let's just wait for Jakub. Okay, cool. Thank you, Jakub. Yeah, sometimes I forgot that we have two Jakubs. So the next one. Um, yeah, I so that this is open since uh, yeah August more or less since one month ago. Uh, I saw that uh, Jakub already reviewed it, but there are some test failures. So what's the status if Falesh is on the call? Yeah, Alesh, do you have any kind of update on this? Okay, let me just unmute myself first. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm moving, uh, like I wrote, I mean, it's the, I would say that the Apache Kafka project is less painful to contribute than this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they have plenty of stuff. I mean, they're compiling like a huge stuff and then they have all these uh, code rules. And the moment, I mean, yesterday I, I got a broken build uh, because I forgot a semicolon in a Groovy class, right? So that and before you realize, I mean, there's no way to simply run all the stuff at once, at least locally. So I'm catching stuff by stuff. And in between, they're always refactoring stuff. But I think uh, yesterday in the evening, I managed to get all the things, all the feedback applied and working. Hopefully, I don't know, today or tomorrow, things will be merged. I don't know. I mean, it's up to them, right? But uh, I mean, the stuff that I added, it's working for us as expected. Uh, the tests are in place. Uh, I refactored their tests to be more accurate and so on. So, yeah. So sorry, it means that uh, you already fixed why these builds are failing upstream. You have to push new changes. Yes, just doing it right now. I mean, there's like a, a how do you call it, code mark uh, which goes over all the code, and then like, the groovy stuff. They're really strict on the groovy stuff, so it it has to be like minimalistic groovy code. Otherwise, it doesn't get by. Right? There's a, a semicolon, or there's like a uh, definition that's too much and so on so and there's a bunch of groovy magic in there as well uh, like you know yesterday i got a i was actually using size on a class that doesn't have size right uh and groovy automatically added size but that meant that it uh, sort of because that class was iteratable uh and it iterated over the stuff, right? But that triggered the uh, tracing and it added extra stuff to the to the whole trace, it, all, all the traces. And I mean, there was pure magic for me because I was looking and then I finally realized, oh yeah, this class doesn't have size, so I need to use something. And looking at that and that triggered all the stuff and so on. So yeah, it took me a while. <laughs> Okay, to cut it short, yeah, working on it, hopefully be, will be merged uh, in the next few days, hopefully. 
Okay, at least it seems that we have a plan. Okay, thank you, Alex. And the last one that I added was this issue. So this one uh, was raised a few times ago. Uh, we had uh, from Mike uh, a PR that was somehow parked by Tom opening a new one here. Um, so yeah, Tom, what's the, the, the status of this? I see that this is uh, in draft. Yeah, I've sort of been trying to think through the alternatives um, for this because although this PR of Mike's, you know, should work, you know, there's nothing technically wrong with it. Um, it I'm not sure it's sort of um, quite the direction we want to go in. It basically boils down to um, how to cancel um, some asynchronous action and in if you're using you know uh, normal threads then um, that's what the sort of the, the thread interrupted status is for and obviously methods that um, block will typically uh, have a um, interruption exception be thrown um, to indicate that you know the the thread was interrupted while they were blocking and blah 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 um, but Vertex basically doesn't really support interruption. Um, so the question is, do we try and um, how, well, how best if we're, so taking a step back, um, if we're sticking with Vertex, then it would be a question of what's the best way of um, sort of bolting some sort of a um, interruption API on top of it. Um, in a way that um, our operator can can use. Uh, but the sort of the bigger question is, or at least the bigger question in my mind is, um, is Vertex really the right tool for the job? Um, and I think the answer to that kind of depends on um, where Java is going with um, Project Loom, which is about um, uh, at the moment, Java's thread class corresponds to a native thread, and Project Loom is about allowing a thread class to maybe correspond to a native thread, but maybe correspond to a, a lightweight um, thread-like construct uh, within the JVM, um, where it would multiplex those on top of uh, a native thread, and that would massively lower the cost of um, using threads because you can spin up these sort of uh, virtual threads very quickly. Um, and I think in the, you know, uh, Project Loom obviously doesn't really exist yet, the, but the, the question is, is do we put a lot of engineering effort into sort of adding some sort of a cancellation feature on top of Vertex if eventually we were going to um, rethink whether to use Vertex at all? Um, and I flip-flopped over this and thought far too hard about the whole thing. Um, I will take <laughs> I will take another look at this PR. Um, no, my, think... my, my, my question was, uh, you are thinking about not using Vertex just in this part of the code, right? Not, or, or, you, or you are thinking more about reviewing if we should use Vertex anymore in the StreamZ operator? Well, the StreamZ operator probably doesn't really need to use Vertex and it comes with quite a lot of costs. Um, so I think there is, and this isn't the, you know, this issue isn't really the sort of, the, although it's me that's brought it up, this issue isn't really sort of the place to, you know, try and go through what all those costs are and come to some sort of measured conclusion. Um, so yeah, I mean, at the moment, at the moment the Kafka. This is particularly to do with the Kafka roller because that's the thing that sort of sits there, um, you know, spending a long time not realizing that oh, actually, the uh, Kafka resource has been deleted. So um, that's sort of what Mike's PR sort of deals with, um, and the Kafka roller actually uses its own thread completely outside of Vertex for doing this. So you know, that's sort of what got me sort of thinking about 
about this in the um yeah yeah i'm not making a lot of coherent sense but i will um take another look at this pr and come to a, a better conclusion okay so just to be sure i i got it right this your pr uh, which is still in draft is about removing vertex in this in this part right and using uh, uh service and native not exactly palatites. not exactly but it, it's kind of going in that direction but i'm not sure it's just a, like a it's just yeah it's Yeah. I'll look at it again. That's all I'm saying. I can't remember the full details of this PR. To okay, be okay, okay, um, okay. That, I'm just trying to recover fine. my thought process from over a month ago about this. Yeah. yeah, just because I guess that the corresponding issue was opened, I don't know, in April. Uh, so just to reach at some point a kind of conclusion. To yeah, this. no, we need to find a way forward on this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Tom. Okay, so uh, we are at the end of uh the issues and PRs that uh, yeah I saw as uh, kind of most important ones. I don't know if uh, someone on the call has some uh, other issues or PRs that want to make attention. And it seems not. So let's move on. There is a new open proposal that was open this uh, week, I guess. I haven't had the time yet for reading this proposal. It seems that uh, Jakub already started the review. So I have no takes on this for now. Uh, did anyone have the time to, to read the proposal or have a first read, first pass? I've not looked at it yet. But obviously, uh, all the maintainers at, at least should have a, a look. Yeah, so I guess that we have an action item here for all the maintainers. Having a first look at it. Okay. Now, there are some uh, follow up from last time. Uh, we talked about the, the annual review. And from the last time, uh, yeah, uh, Jakub was in charge to prepare the annual review document. It should be somewhere here. Yeah, we have the deadline on October 17th. And it seems that, yeah, Jakub opened the PR. Uh, the maintainers uh, did already have a look at this, but yeah, anyone on the call can take a look to, to this PR. Uh, if you have any kind of comment feedback for this, uh, this is the kind of annual review that each project in CNCF has to prepare uh, yeah, for the foundation. Um, so I guess that that's done. So we are waiting for uh, feedback from the TOC as well. And if it's going to be accepted or, uh, or not. Any comments? So let's move on and uh, incubation. Uh, you know that um, we would like to move the project from the sandbox to the incubation um, uh, state. Uh, me, Tom, and others, um, other maintainers, Jakub, had uh, the, the, a call with Chris from uh, CNCF. Uh, he, yeah, suggested us to open the PR. It sounds that it should not be so difficult. And uh, he also provided a couple of examples of um, other projects like Kubvert and uh, this backstage project that are asking for uh, to be graduated to incubation. 
So it seems that uh, we should start to open the PR um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so it seems to me that uh, Chris was really positive on this side. Uh, it should be not so difficult to be graduated somehow. We have anyway users uh, uh, of the project, uh, so we can uh, promote the project as be used by different users and end users, um, as we have in the adopters file. So it's a matter on this side just to start them writing the proposal for uh, being um, graduated to incubation. Uh, do you have any other comments, Tom, from this? Uh, you were on the call with me. Not really. I mean, I think in terms of um, timing, we're probably going to do the um, get the annual review out of the way first, um, and then um, probably yeah, sort of start doing some of the paperwork for um, incubation. So um, yeah, maybe a, a month or possibly two away before we uh, really sort of start on that um, in earnest, but uh, it did seem to be fairly positive um, and not quite as heavyweight a process as maybe we'd first imagine, so. Do I remember rightly from last year that the annual re review just kind of sat there as a PR until um, almost kind of six months or so before it was eventually sort of merged with a, thanks, this looks okay. That was what happened last year, but um, Amy from CNCF was chasing us for the PR um, in time for a particular TOC meeting. So um, assuming that they, you know, aren't massively overwhelmed in that meeting with stuff to review, um, I would anticipate this year that it would um, happen yeah, a lot sooner than six months. A little bit more timely fashion. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other comments on this? So the next one is the survey. I remember that Stanislav was working on this. Uh, I had the first pass, uh, I guess a few weeks ago. Um, were there any other changes, uh, Stanislav? Can you update us on, on this? Doc. No, uh, about the last question, there were, there were some suggestions, uh, but uh, I don't think there's uh, more changes. Okay, so I remember that uh, last year we had this uh, over August, right? More or less, or it was uh, later. Yeah, I think it was roughly August. August, so we are kind of uh, late this year for this, so we should do that uh, by the end of the year, at least. Um, what do you think about having another pass on this doc and uh, finally, finally preparing, preparing for the, yeah, to have this out? Yeah, I've not looked at this uh, yet, so um, I probably should. The main thing I think is that we've got an idea about sort of what we want to get out of each question, because I think it's it's tempting to sort of ask questions and then only when you sort of have the answers of as to how people, you know, have responded, that you realize that oh, actually the question wasn't quite right. And so you can't come to the conclusion that you sort of wanted to come to. So questions like, you know, how do you install Strimzy is, is you know, that's quite good because it gives us a guide as to, you know, should we be putting more effort into Helm, for example. Um, Whereas some of the other questions last year, it was just like, well, okay, yeah, we've got some numbers, but what do we, you know, how can we actually use these? Um, and so if you've got a question that, you know, you can't actually make use of the results that come out of it, then it might be worth scrubbing that question because you'll get more people responding to a shorter survey. That's my sort of um, overall sort of meta experience from last year is we probably asked questions that, you know, kind of interesting answer, but ultimately um, didn't yield any insights as to how we should expend the uh, sort of resources that we've got available.
Yeah, I agree with you, yeah. Okay. So, the next one is about JMX Trans. It's a follow-up discussion from the last uh, call where, uh, yeah, we were with Sam and Graham, uh, have a look at it and updating it. So I don't know if uh, I don't see Sam. Graham yeah, is on the well, call. Yeah. yeah so I, I said, that, uh, hi there. I said that we would, uh, we would do the update, but we haven't done it yet. So um, I'll try and make sure that it's done by the next community call. Um, but it is just a bump up to the latest version of JMX Trans and then doing, you know, the tests and things to make sure it's working. Okay, thank you. So I will take a note that uh, maybe we will have something uh, before the next call, right? Yep. Thank you. Okay, so I guess that the last point was added by Tom Bentley to read the, the TB there. Yeah, that was me. Um, it relates to the uh, issue I opened um, earlier this week. Um, and I had some ideas in the shower this morning, um, you know, conveniently, and I thought it might just be worth talking about them before I um, opened any more issues or created any more pointless work. Um, so without Jakob here, it might um, it might be worth deferring till uh, next time. But the, just very briefly, so that people can. Sorry, Tom. The, the issue that you are talking about is this one five five nine four. Uh, oh. <laughs> These are uh, report script is yeah, of limited basically. use. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Okay. Um, so basically, the, one of the problems with that report script is um, it just relies on um, kubectl logs which means that during um, some sort of rolling action, whether that's a rolling um, restart uh, orchestrated by the operator, or whether that is, um, for instance, a sort of a rolling node drain at the Kubernetes level, um, when pods get deleted, we lose access to the logs. And so um, it's really hard to debug um, issues related to um, the rolling, uh, those sort of rolling actions. Um, and this is not a problem if um, the user of StreamZ has got some alternative logging stack installed, um, which, you know, sort of uh, companies are, are likely to do. Um, but it does mean that we can't benefit from um, bug reports uh, to do with uh, the rolling from people that don't have that, um, so that might be sort of much uh, much smaller sort of startups or people just sort of running Strimzy inside Minikube or whatever. Um, so the basic idea that I had um, would be it would be nice if it was possible to um, basically log to a persistent volume. Um, that would therefore the logs would survive the deletion of a and recreation of a pod, um, and therefore you could see what was happening to a pod both before and after a restart. Um, so this is, the, I think, the sort of the, the crucial um, thing to sort of think about here is um, we don't want to go reinventing, um, you know, sort of. Uh, logging stacks. So this is sort of really um, about sort of making that sufficiently lightweight that, you know, it doesn't come with a huge sort of maintenance burden and that, but that would allow people to sort of um, configure their cluster to be in a, this sort of logging mode. And then the um, report.sh script could fetch those um, logs in preference to um, using kubectl logs. Now, one of the benefits of, of doing this is we could um, use our own um, log formatting. 
which then means that we it would lower the cost of investing in tooling that would um, be able to read those logs rather than uh, people like me having to poke through them by hand. Um, so that would be another benefit is, you know, having a, a sort of a standard um, format for those logs because we'd only be expecting us to be reading them rather than, you know, often when sort of people export their logs to some sort of logging stack, they want them in JSON or whatever so that the logging stack, you know, can, can consume them. Um, so yeah, it's just that was the basic sort of idea. So on the one hand, I think it would be really beneficial for us to be able to get good quality bug reports um, in this area where at the moment, you know, it's often, uh, well, you know, we've only getting half the information and therefore you can't really figure out what's gone wrong. Um, on the other hand, we don't want to go reinventing, you know, the sort of whole logging stack idea um, when, you know, sort of uh, people who are using Strimzy in an organization will typically have their own way of doing that. So it's kind of, those are the, the tensions, I think, in in that sort of basic idea. So I just wanted to, yeah, sort of see what people um, thought about that. Assuming it made any sense to anyone. No, it makes uh, absolutely sense to me. Uh, we know that some, so quite, 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 uh, quite often when we need to to investigate some issues, we need uh, logs from pods that are killed or they restarted somehow. So yeah, uh, I agree with you that uh, reinventing the wheel is uh, not always uh, a great idea. Uh, I had experience using CloudWatch somehow as one of the tooling for. Uh, uh, where you yeah can uh, from AWS for getting the logs from uh, previous days of working of your pods. So I I see. So on this uh, issue, are you proposing to to have a new tool for uh, for getting logs from previous um, um, running pods or not? Um, so, I mean, that issue was sort of really it highlighted two things. So one is um, being able to um, drill down a little bit into sort of problems around, uh, well, basically being able to get um, log dumps. So by this, I mean Kafka log segment files um, and the like, which would be, you know, sort of one thing. And then sort of separately to that, there is this sort of problem around restarts in particular, where we end up losing pod logs. And that's, you know, really harmful to being able to debug problems in this area. So there's, there's although it's one issue, there's really sort of two issues there. Um, and if, if, you know, the consensus is that this idea around um, using a persistent volume to save logs um, somewhere to solve the rolling update problem is worth sort of investing in, then we should create another issue um, specifically for that and leave 5594 for the um, log dumping part. Yeah, to be honest, I would like to think more because I, I'm not, not sure if in general it's much better having the user having uh, his own uh, tooling for uh, storing logs instead of having us supporting natively. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I wasn't completely convinced, which is why I thought it was worth at least sort of talking through the idea um, rather than opening an issue. And um, yeah, anyway, have a think and. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can come back to it next time. Any other comment, guys? I think the lack of comment means it's pretty much a meh. <laughs> well, you you just raised the, the, the issue, right? So uh, more people would like to think before talking.
So in, in general, I think it's a it's a good idea. I think anything that we can do to improve the debuggability um, is uh, it, it helps users, it helps us. Um, and, and I'm sort of generally supportive uh, of, of anything in this area. Uh, almost anything is better than nothing. Um, even if we decide that it's not worth a kind of doing everything, then um, sort of every everything helps basically. Yeah, I mean, one sort of just to elaborate a little bit, sort of what I was talking about with the the scripting is, you know, I, I do think if we had a, a particular log format, then it it does enable us to. Um, write and distribute with StreamZ scripts for, you know, if if necessary, distribute with StreamZ scripts for sort of figuring out um, these sorts of problems and being able to analyze this stuff in a, a more than sort of ad hoc way, which, you know, I think long term um, would tend to be beneficial for us and users. Maybe another idea instead of uh, developing our own solution could be at least uh, um, providing some kind of uh, examples or documentation on how a user can set up the um, tools like, I don't know, Elasticsearch or other things, CloudWatch and AWS for, uh, for writing the, the, the logs there. Uh, maybe that could be useful as well. Yeah. Um... That would be useful. Um, my experience with getting bug reports from, you know, sort of people using logging stacks is that they're they're difficult to use um, in that they're often, you know, different formats for the logging. Sometimes the log is, um, you know, um, time increasing down the log, but sometimes it's time increasing up the log. Um, so um yeah and i've been i've received logs in all sorts of weird formats where it's json encoded but it's not plain text it's given to me as a pdf file and so on and that makes it so difficult to you know do something useful with the logs because you know you want to be analyzing logs at the very least with tools like grab um even if you're not sort of writing something you know a little bit more sophisticated um in Python to be able to sort of correlate what's going on between, you know, the multiple different brokers, you know, before and after a rolling restart. And, you know, being able to invest in that sort of tooling would be like, I think, really beneficial because, you know, you get a load of logs and just even being able to sort of get an overview as to what's actually going on in this cluster is quite hard work. And it's made a lot harder if everyone's giving their logs to you in a different format. No, yeah, I, I, I agree about, uh, I had the same experience having these different kind of logs. Uh, the only thing is that may, maybe sometimes when you have uh, users running, I don't know, their Kafka clusters with streams in production uh, with some other microservices based application, they already have their own system for logging. And uh, for them, it's kind of simple to, to, to configure, uh, to use. For, uh, for the Kafka cluster as well. So in the end, you have to deal with it if you, they are going to provide you yep. logs. No, I, I, completely right. accept, I completely accept that I'm never gonna be able to get away from JSON in PDF files. Um, but, you know, I think it gives people options if they're not running uh, an alternative logging stack um, and therefore we're able to get, you know, better bug reports from, um, you know, sort of smaller users of Strimzy. Um, which is at the moment information that just basically is lost to us. And therefore we lose opportunities to improve the software because, you know, these smaller users who might be using, um, you know, uh, a more bleeding edge version of Strimzy, for example, just aren't able to give us the logs that we need. Or it's, it's too hard for them as well. You know, very often it's, you know, there's quite a lot of back and forth about, you know, which logs to collect. And, you know, both the sort of points in issue sort of uh, 5594 are about, okay, how can we how can we make it easier still than just report.show? Report.show is, you know, a useful step in 
the right direction but um, it's still a lot less than perfect and if we can make it easier for users to collect the logs that we need um, then you know we can actually make use of that information so it could be that you know if they're able to reproduce a problem even though they might have their own logging stack the simplest way of getting the logs that we need is to just say look configure your CR like this reproduce it and then run this script and it would you know give us a zip file which we can then analyze with the tools that don't yet exist but you know it's that sort of the the big picture here yeah <clears throat> so i would say yeah let's think more on this and uh discuss again on the on the next community meeting unless there are any any other comments now it sounds like no so we are at the end so unless uh, there are any other topics that someone wants to raise I can give you back 50 minutes of your day. Sounds okay. like I got an extra 15 minutes a day. Yes. So thank you very much for joining us and have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for running. Bye. 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 Bye.